Hi everyone and welcome back for another video. As you can see I'm back from Ghana and um, I was supposed to attend my grandmother's funeral but unfortunately I couldn't because um, every time the funeral dates changed I had to change my flights which I'd booked you know some time in advance um, and that ended up costing me quite a lot of money and in the end I was almost a thousand pounds in before I managed to actually leave the country. Um, but the funeral took place uh, a week after I left and unfortunately I am deeply regretting that decision. Um, my mum was telling me that it was a really, really great send off and, you know, I would have loved to attend my very first African funeral and also, you know, pay my respects to my grandmother. But um, I think maybe that was a bit of a hasty decision to um, to not attend. But, you know, I've just that's something I've got to live with. But I will be attending um, a celebration of her life, which will take place a year after the funeral. OK. Um, Aside from the funeral, um, obviously this time I didn't really go as a tourist because the funeral took up quite a lot of um, people's time. But I, th I thought it would be, you know, sort of helpful to give you a, an idea of some of the things that I got up to that weren't funeral related. So um, a few discoveries. The first thing I discovered was that there is a place, well, there's a highway called George Bush Highway. And I noticed this highway being built when I was first there last year. But I didn't realise that, you know, it was like named after somebody and it's now completed uh, and it's actually you know just really heartwarming to see how quickly we can get things done if we have the financing um so you know the um the highway was donated by george bush so for those of you americans out there um you know uh, that's what your tax dollars are being used on um but you know i'm sure it very gratefully received um uh, and unfortunately, obviously, it's now called the George Bush Highway. Uh, but I wish it was called something else, but hey, um, beggars can't be choosers. Okay, so that was the first thing I discovered. And then the second thing I discovered was a polo club, which is um, not too far from the Accra Mall. And um, I stumbled upon it by accident. I just decided to go for a walk because because it's so hot, you don't really go for a walk. You can't you can't really walk around. It's just too hot. And I guess for me, I'm not used to hot weather because, you know, here in England, it's always cold and, you know, it was rushing about. So, um, you know, taking a walk out there is probably not really advisable unless you've got uh, a temperament that's used to hot weather. Anyway, so I discovered this uh, polo club. And um, I was talking to some of the trainers and discovered that they were Hauser speakers. So, you know, for my Hauser speakers out there, Yayade, you know, Yajigi, you know. Um, so I was talking to them in my faltering Hauser and uh, discovered that the reason why um, most of the trainers there were Hauser speakers or from the north was that um, they uh, traditionally in the north were used to horses. So they'd been invited down to the south to help train the horses. Um, obviously, the southerners were playing the polo, um, obviously very wealthy southerners. Uh, and then um, I looked around the area and there is a uh, an apartment block just attached to the polo um, uh, building uh, to the polo um, grounds and all you see is luxury vehicles like Mercedes-Benz, um, BMWs, you know, your Audis, your um, your Jaguars, all of those kind of um, vehicles all parked up. So you can see that they're very, very wealthy people. And I guess polo is generally played by wealthy people the world over. So why should Ghana be any different? Um, you can get lessons for about 26 cities. 26 cities is about £10. So I really wish I had taken up, um, taken them up on the offer. And I did intend to come back, but in the end, I think I just forgot all of the funeral sort of stuff just got in the way and I just completely forgot all about it until I got back. Anyway, so next time when I go, I will definitely, um, you know, get myself some uh, lessons. Uh, a couple of things um, I discovered um, was that on a Sunday, everything shuts down. Uh, literally, like, you know, in the morning from about well from the morning up until 12 everything shuts down because everybody's at church and I suppose I knew that people were religious in Ghana but um, I think living here because you know nobody well church is obviously not that big a deal here very few people attend church at least the ones I know um, I didn't realize that church was such a big deal out there although you do see lots though I should have realized because there's loads of billboards of you know particular pastors you get pastors from America pastors from England you know and everything's an international church you know so and so is international church of blah 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 and they are set on absolutely enormous grounds you know some of these grounds you think they're hotels the size of them and um, you know and the pastors obviously drive around in very very expensive vehicles you know I guess uh, God is blessing them a lot more than other people anyway um, 
uh, another thing um, I discovered was a housing fair. So they they had it. They were putting on a housing fair, and um, you can get an executive apartment or executive flat, um, house, which is about has about four bedrooms, two bathrooms, for two hundred thirty thousand US dollars or there or thereabouts. Which is a lot of money. I was like, wow, God, that's really expensive, you know, because 230,000 US dollars, I think, is something, or well, just under maybe 200 grand here in um, the States. Somebody correct me on my um, exchange rate, but I'm sure it's under 200,000 um, pounds in the UK. And you could get yourself, you know, a fairly decent flat, maybe not in the most fantastic area, for that sort of money. So you just imagine that in Ghana, of all places, that you would have to pay that much for a house. It's like, wow. Hopefully one day I'll be able to afford it still with the way the prices are going up. Um, what else? I um, Oh, I discovered something. Okay, so in Ghana you can buy um, bags of water and this has been a great initiative by the government to help reduce the cases of dysentery. So it gives people access, ready access to clean um, drinking water. Um, and these bags... Um, uh, of water are about 10 pesos so you can buy them anywhere um, usually on the roadside or you know where somebody's selling them and um, what usually happens is that people tend to throw away these bags of um, water and it causes a lot of environmental pollution so what some enterprising person has done has come up with these bags which are basically made out of um, the Ba water bags that have just been thrown everywhere and it's called uh, their website is called trashybags.com and what I love is their little slogan which says cleaning up Africa one bag at a time and that's a really fantastic initiative and you know um, if ever you're in um, Ghana obviously please do the right thing and, and buy one of these bags rather than buying um, another bag or taking another bag to put your stuff in so I think that's a really great initiative um, I went to a place called um, Citizen Kofi. Citizen Kofi is in the middle of Osu and it is um, generally um, seen as a bit of a nightclub slash restaurant slash office block. And the first time I went there I did notice it but I thought that it was closed because it has some sort of construction boarding around it. But it is actually open but they're still doing a little bit of construction work by building out the rest of the, the building to make it into um, office space. The views from inside are absolutely amazing. Um, it was really hot in there when I when we got there because we were the only um, customers in there. and. Um, the uh, the heat was just something else but they did put on the AC but it takes a little bit while, of a while to kick in as, and you don't want to be wasting electricity when there's nobody in the building anyway so um, the food really let it down the view is absolutely amazing the decor is amazing but the food really let it down because I had um, jollof rice and that jollof rice tasted like it'd been cooked several times over reheated and then dished up on a plate to me and the same thing with the stew the stew tasted like old stew that you mix in new stew to try and extend the life of the old stew so it just tasted like old stew slash jollof stew you know it wasn't I wasn't really impressed by that but the plantain you can't really get plantain wrong was absolutely delicious I love plantain okay um what else oh i found um wedding venues which i'll tell you about in the next video and i also saw some suppliers for a project that i'm working on i shall tell you more about that later on um and uh what else? Oh yeah, if you want to be able to um, watch football, um, you can watch football at the Silverbird Cinema. I didn't even know you could do this, um, and I discovered this while I was there, that you can watch a football match in the cinema. And that's so cool. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's about it for this video. I don't really want to go on too long, so hopefully this has been, you know, uh, kept those of you who haven't been back to Ghana for ages updated. But next time I go, I will do more of a sort of tourist video so that you can see more of Ghana. It's really changing. It's really, you know, developing. I'm so proud of the industriousness of the industrialness of our people. Um, and you know, really, Ghana is just so sweet if you have money anyway so i'll see you in the next video for an update on my wedding venues see you later bye